All right, everybody. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, everybody, if you can hear me, raise your hand or uh, leave a little message there in the question box so I know that you can hear me loud and clear. We'll get started in just a second. All right, cool. Thank you, Steph. Matthias, Jason, Billy, Leandro, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. All right, so we're going to hang on here for another, let's see, minute or two um, and then get started. Today's webinar is going to be a bit different. It's going to be a lot quicker, so you guys can get right back to work. And I think it's probably going to have the greatest impact on everybody who is uh, listening and attending this uh, Fitness Business Accelerator coaching program. So, with that said, let us begin. All right, so today's webinar, like I said, is going to be a little bit different than what we've done before. This Fitness Business Accelerator coaching session, uh, frankly, is going to be uh, a lot different. We're not going to talk about how to get clients. We're certainly not going to talk about how to get leads and prospects or how to generate more referrals, how to sell more training or boot camp programs, or how to craft and deploy direct mail. Or for that matter, we're not going to talk about how to write compelling email copy. You're probably wondering, well, then doesn't that defeat the purpose of what this fitness business coaching program is all about? Well, I say no. See, today we're going to talk about what really matters. And I've had a bit of an epiphany in Las Vegas this weekend. And what I discovered this weekend at Las Vegas at our 100K Info Mastermind meeting, well, was something pretty profound. And... And I think you'll appreciate it in just a moment. What I discovered was that there are two types of entrepreneurs. Now, I want you to realize in this Fitness Info Mastermind group that Craig Ballantyne and I run, there's 52 members. In fact, it's so big that we have to run it over a four-day period, uh, group A, group B. And when we are running these things, and these are the highest, these are the highest level people now. Now, keep in mind, they pay like $1,800 a month. They're the highest level uh, people by way of action takers, by way of pioneers, by way of doers. Yet when we went around the tables and asked them, where are you in your business? Where do you need to go? And what's stopping you from getting there? I found two very distinct types of entrepreneurs. There's the type one, and this person seems to always be pressed for time. They can never really bring an idea to fruition. They seem always to be struggling in their business and lacking energy and creativity to succeed. Then there's the type two entrepreneur. And this person is growing their business at a speed of 2x. They magically have time to put new marketing and business growth tactics into action. And this person is busy making things happen rather than busy making excuses. And so the big game changer here is something really important, right? So what's the difference between these two types of entrepreneurs? Well, quite frankly, contrary to what most people believe, the difference is not that the type two entrepreneur is any smarter or has access to more and better information or lives in a better or different part of the country that's somehow more fitness business friendly or has access to some secret thing that you don't have access to. There is one very particular different thing that the type 2 entrepreneur has that the type 1 entrepreneur is lacking. And the big difference is a unique state of mind. Now, the type 2 entrepreneur is driven, has a burning desire to succeed, is highly focused on his outcome, on what he wants from his business, from his life, takes personal responsibility, and is one action-taking son of a gun, right? And so having been around these guys for a period of four days, I really got to see the difference between the fitness business owners who are kind of beating up on themselves, coming up with excuses, wallowing in mediocrity, and the ones who are ready to dominate the world, there is no other option but to succeed, where failure to these guys is not an option. And so having 
seen this for four days straight, I realized that there truly are a type one and a type two entrepreneur. Now, today I'm going to help you become the type two entrepreneur by helping you overcome the five factors of failure that most people latch onto and don't even know that it's taking them down a rabbit hole of fear, frustration, and failure. There's five factors that I've been able to identify over the last 10 years, not only through working on myself and bettering myself, but also working with hundreds of high-level coaching clients, and this is not just in the fitness space, but working and helping businesses who are doing $40 million a year, another business that's doing $11 million a year, another that's doing $22 million a year, and working with type 2 entrepreneurs who are driven, motivated, and take no prisoner versus those who have all the other information uh, and content that the, the highest, most successful uh, entrepreneurs have, but for some reason are wallowing in mediocrity, coming up with excuses, and don't seem to have enough time to succeed. Now, if this is starting to give you a little bit of an uncomfortable feeling, if there's a little bit of a knot in your stomach right now, then I'm speaking specifically to you. So please pay attention because I'm coming from a place of love. So the five pillars are this. Failure factor number one is self-limiting beliefs. Now I realized this years ago in myself when I was an independent contractor and not realizing that I could sell more than 10 or 15 sessions at a time. Like most personal trainers, I was in the business of selling one or two or 10 or 15 sessions at a time. And when I met a guy who was selling two and three thousand dollar training programs, I was in disbelief. See, I had self-limiting beliefs. I had doubts, fears. My self-image didn't allow me to 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 grasp the concept that someone can actually buy a two or three thousand dollar personal training or boot camp program from me. I didn't have the self-confidence that I needed to sell that kind of a program. I was in a place of negative self-talk constantly when the idea of making six figures or seven figures was presented to me. I couldn't do it. My clients were different. My economy is different. I don't have the right education. I didn't have enough resources. The information wasn't readily available to me. All of that is self-limiting beliefs. At the end of the day, if someone is doing it, then you can do it. You know, my friend Craig Ballantyne told a story this weekend at our mastermind group where he and his friends went to like a uh, like a sports chalet or Dick's Sporting Goods store, and uh, it was him and three other friends, and they sat around this, uh, this big dumbbell or barbell looking at it, and one guy tried lifting it, and he couldn't budge it. The other try guy tried lifting it, and he couldn't budge it. The third guy was able to lift it somehow magically. The two guys that were unable to lift it came back around and were able to lift it off the floor. Now, what does that mean? Their self-limiting beliefs were shattered, right? You look at Roger Bannister, the man that broke the four-minute mile. Soon as he broke the four-minute mile, others were breaking the four-minute mile, right? What's the big reason there? We all have, even at the highest level of athleticism, we all have self-limiting beliefs, doubts, fears, self-image problems, confidence problems, uh, and issues, in general, negative self-talk that limits our productivity, our outcome, our output, our desire to achieve more, to get security, to get whatever it is that you want, more money, more freedom, right? And the minute that Roger Bannister came through and broke that four-minute mile, others were breaking it left and right. Now, nothing changed in the human body, right? You still have two arms, two legs, same number of muscles. Nothing changed, other than others saw it and they chose to break their self-limiting beliefs and accept, instead of doubt, accept the fact that they can do this as well. And so if you are living in a state of self-limiting beliefs, then you are latching on to failure factor number one, and we're going to deal with that, and uh, you have to personally deal with that. Now, failure factor number two is lack of specific focus, right? We sit there at the mastermind. And we ask many of these entrepreneurs who are doing super duper well in their businesses, now what more do you want? In fact, one of the uh, one of our uh, members for our info group said, "Well, look, you know, now I'm making uh, twenty five thousand dollars a month, and uh, frankly, I'm comfortable. 
you know, I'm comfortable. I just don't have that hunger anymore. And I don't know what else to do. Well, what he was lacking, really, was lack of specific focus. See, when he was sub $100,000 a year, when he was making well under $8,000 a month, his sole goal was to make $100,000 a year and help more people. Now, once he way exceeded the $100,000 a year mark, because he had a specific goal, it was to make $100,000 a year, which is $8,333 a month, he had a specific goal and he met it. And then he somehow managed to get to $25,000 or uh, $25,000 a month, which is obviously a nice chunk of change, multiple six figures, right? However, at some point, he lost any specific focus. Does he want more money? Yeah. Does he want to help more people? Yeah. But there's nothing specific about what he wants. Now, Craig Ballantyne, going back to him again, if you, you know, read any of his stuff, he's got a million person goal that he set, right? I think by the year 2016 or 2020, his goal is to have transformed 1 million lives, 1 million bodies. Now for that to happen, he has to make more products, joint venture with more affiliates, get his name out not only on the internet, but on television and print. And he has to impact a lot more people. He's got a very specific goal. He's got a very specific focus. And when you have a specific focus, you can reverse engineer. All you have to do in Craig's case is he would take his million people and let's say we subtract the 200,000 that he's already helped. So that's 800,000 people. And let's say that we have, oh gosh, I don't know, six years left. He would divide the 800,000 by six years, and he'd know exactly how many people he would have to transform each year to hit his goal. See, when you have a specific focus, a specific goal to hit, you'll hit it. In fact, you, you may come close to hitting it, which I call as failing forward. But when you don't have focus, when you're lacking this real specific drive, then you're kind of like a rudderless ship, right? You just kind of go where the current takes you. And oftentimes, the current does not take you to a good place. In fact, more often than not, it takes you down a rabbit hole of, again, fear, frustrations, and failure. So let's talk about failure factor number three, which is the failure to act. Dan Kennedy, one of my mentors, says the failure to act is much more often the product of inner emotional resistance than external resistance. In other words... You not taking action is more likely because you have your self-limiting beliefs and doubts and fears and not because you're externally lacking something. You're not lacking the information. You're not lacking the coaching. You're not lacking the support. What you're lacking is the emotional components needed to step out of your comfort zone to look fear in the eyes and do it anyway. Now, there's a great book called Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Suzanne Jeffers. I suggest you get it, read it, and take action on it, right? Because just getting it and reading it and telling yourself, well, gosh, okay, I'm one of those people that sometimes uh, look fear in the eye but don't take action. Well, that's just you just gathered information. We're not in the information gathering business. We're in the action taking business. So understand that failure to take action is a true limiting component of success in every way. And by the way, I shared this this weekend at the Mastermind, and I'll share it here with you guys. Failure to take action, failure to set specific goals, and even having self-limiting beliefs, to me, are all signs of a person being extremely selfish. Because when you really think about it, all of us are in the business of helping people, helping people increase their, their level of fitness, decrease body fat, lose weight, right? Improve their fitness level. And if we are failing to act, if you are failing to take action on the information that we hand you and coach you and motivate you and guide you through to get more clients, then you are being selfish. And because of your fears and self-limiting beliefs and lack of action taking, you're letting down this person who is probably otherwise crying themselves to sleep every night because they don't have access to their resources and to the fitness and fat loss knowledge that you do and that you could be giving them but are too selfish to. Think about that. 
Now let's talk about failure factor number four, lack of discipline. Now this is probably one of the key components why, why most people will have peaks and valleys in their business, what I call a bungee cord business, right? Or imagine like a bungee cord, one minute you're up, next minute you're down, next minute you're up, next minute you're down. If you lack discipline, in other words, if you are an excuse giver, well, I didn't do this because I didn't have enough time, or I didn't get, get around to that because uh, I didn't sleep well last night, right? People who lack discipline lack true success. Sure, they'll have one hit wonders and you'll have a good week, a good month, a good couple of months in a row. But if you wake up at the same time, go to sleep at the same time, manage your business by a to-do list, writing down things in priority that you have to do and then crossing them off as you do it. Outsource the things that are not in your top 5% and focus on the things that are in your type in your top 5%. A person who's disciplined will always do the same thing over and over again, the same thing that produces results. And each time you do it, you solidify the results that you're building. It's almost like when you set a foundation for a house, at first that foundation, even though it's concrete, it's liquid, it's wet. You can't set something down on it, whatever that thing is, will sink right into the liquid concrete. Within a maybe day or two, that concrete has hardened, but it's still not super duper strong. It's not solidified yet. It needs more time. It needs more repetition of time to go by, right? You may be able to set up a, a, a can of Coke on that concrete and it won't sink, but if you drive a pickup truck on it, boy, it might just cave right in, won't it? But you give it another few days and another few weeks, and that foundation for that house is rock solid. That's discipline. It's doing the same thing that produces results and adds value to people's lives over and over again until it becomes routine, right? And when you have discipline, you let go of excuses and you take personal responsibility. And that's when you crush to failure factor number four. Now, finally, finally, the failure factor number five that we identified is lack of specific deadlines, right? So if you want to increase your business to $25,000 a month, if you want to get your first 100000 so you just need to get to 8333 or if you want to get to seven figures and do a million dollars, which is $83,333 a month, then you need a specific deadline. You can't just want it, right? At that point, it's just a dream. It becomes a goal when you set a deadline to it. So if you want to take your dream of seven figures or multiple six figures or your first six figures and make it a reality, then add a deadline to your dream and make it a goal. Now, again, going back to what Craig Ballantyne says, because I spent the last four days with him running our mastermind group, you've got to take all of your deadlines and cut them in half. Most of us spend too much time giving ourselves way too much slack so we can spend a lot of time screwing off, getting sucked into the Twitter and the YouTube and the Facebook and the Pinterest funnels of things, right? And before you know it, you're checking emails, you're checking text, and you feel like you're doing something. But at the end of the day, you did nothing to add value to lives of others and to add income and security to your life. And so you give yourself a long deadline to get what you want, when in reality, if you just shut down the distractions, you can cut all your deadlines in half. When the, I heard Craig Ballantyne say, cut your deadlines in half the first time, this was about a year and a half ago, we were sitting in another mastermind group, and he was speaking to our group. Now, at the time, I had committed to running a marathon, but I had no specific deadline. I had committed to my wife that I was going to run a marathon with her, but I had no specific deadline. And each year, a new marathon would come by and pass me, and I'd say, well, I'm going to run the next one. I'm going to run the next one. But I hadn't set a date to start training and a date for when the deadline, uh, when the marathon is uh, to, to sign up. I never committed to that, right? Didn't commit to a deadline. Now, as soon as I heard him say that, I said, fuck it. Now what I'm going to do is register for the nearest marathon right now it just so happened that the closest marathon that was coming up was only six weeks away 
Now, if you know me, I'm six foot tall, 235 pounds. I am not designed by nature to run long distance, 26.2 miles. I can drive it. I'm not designed to run it. However, I had committed to cutting my deadlines. I had six weeks to the next marathon that was coming up. I registered for it on the spot, and I hired a marathon running coach, and she emailed me my workouts, my running schedule, every night, and I went out there at midnight every night after I tucked my kids to bed and hung out a little bit and started running the streets of Chino Hills. A one-mile walk became a three-mile jog, which became a five-mile run, which became an eight-mile run. And a week before the event, I ran 15 miles straight. I ran so far that I actually ran into two different cities. I ran through Chino Hills into the city of Diamond Bar. I actually stopped and took a picture with my iPhone of the sign that says, Welcome to Diamond Bar. And then I kept going into the city of Pomona, went all the way around and came back to Chino Hills. That was such an amazing feeling. Now, if a guy like me who's never run before, is flat-footed, has had two knee surgeries, can commit to running a marathon in six weeks and doing it, and of course, I went and ran the, six, uh, the, the San Diego Marathon and completed all 26.2 miles. If I could do that by setting a deadline, God knows every single person listening and watching this webinar can easily set a deadline of improving their business, of getting more clients, changing more lives, generating more referrals, retaining your clients longer, improving your sales presentation, bettering yourself. Just set the deadline and get the resources and support you need to get there. So what do you do now? Well, first off, we stop feeling sorry for yourself, right? What we found was the type 1 people mainly wallow in mediocrity. They feel sorry for themselves. So if that's you, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Be thankful for the opportunities you have and the time in which you live in. You live in the information age. You can simply shoot an email to Frankie or to Cable or to me and ask me for the resource that you need to grow your business, to get more clients, to improve your sales, to, your sales, to improve yourself, and we'll send it to you. If you need the motivation, you reach out to Cable or to Fernando, your coaches, and you ask for the motivation, you ask for the step-by-step -step resources, you ask for the guidance, you ask for the accountability. You have everything you need in this day and age to have the success, the opportunities, the lifestyle, the freedom that you want. Right? So you don't have to let these five failure factors define you. Make a change and change things now. If you feel that you've let yourself succumb to one or all of these five failure factors, make a change today. Read or listen to Psycho-Cybernetics. You know, get the book, Feel the Fear and Do It Anyway by Suzanne Jeffers. Go to a psychologist or a psychiatrist. Seriously, I've referred two, I think three of my coaching clients to, to psychologists because th the problem was out of my scope. It was, they were in self-sabotage mode. I'd give them the strategies that work for everybody else, and for some reason, these three people would somehow self-sabotage. And the answer always to me was, well, it didn't work, or things are different. My market's different. My client's different. The community is saturated, yet people in very similar circumstances were super successful. Two of the three took me up on the idea of going to a psychologist and working through their issues of fear, of frustrations, whether they're issues of money or self-doubt or negative self-talk or limiting beliefs. And both of those people are now making multiple six figures. Quite frankly, I've gone to a shrink when I needed to and worked through any limiting beliefs that I've had. To me, it's no different than working with Jay Abraham when I paid him $10,000 for a day of coaching. It's no different than going to a Dan Kennedy event. It's no different than paying $25,000 and sitting through a 12-month mastermind with Joe Polish. It's no different than any of that. Someone else has the resources and the knowledge. I'm a person of action. I'm willing to deal with the pain of them telling me that I have this problem, and then asking them, then give me the solution, and I take the action, albeit painful, 
to better myself and my business so I can help you more. That's the responsibility that you have to your clients, to your community. Your circumstances are not different, not different one bit than any other trainer out there. It's your state of mind that's different than the trainer who has no other option but to succeed. So again, if you feel that this particular webinar is talking to you, you know, reach out to me, reach out to Frankie, reach out to Cable, reach out to Fernando, right? And let us help you. If you need the resources and the information, that's the easiest thing to give you, man. We can put it in the mail. We can send you the, the username and password to whatever resource you need to get more clients, which is why this particular webinar is not about getting more clients and getting, you know, improving your business, making more sales. We'll hand you that stuff. The thing that makes that stuff work is your state of mind. It's your willingness to take action, to have this burning desire in your gut to say, hell or high water, I will make this work. And if it fails, I'm not going to make excuses. I'm going to take responsibility and say, coaches, this didn't work. What else can I do or how can I do it different or better, right? That is what makes the difference between the type one entrepreneur and the type two entrepreneur. I hope this makes sense to you. So let's stop the bad habits and do what you know is right. Take action, ask for help, and never, ever, ever give up. I guess no better time than now to open this up for questions because I'm truly here to help you. So if you have questions, how can I help you? Go ahead and ask those questions here. Otherwise, we can simply end the webinar and you can go on and take action on what you need to and reach out to us individually for help as you need it. Any questions? All right. All right, Leandro, that's awesome, man. Great job. Uh, let's see here. I really needed this webinar. I feel that this was truly divine. Mateis, I'm glad this helped, my friend. And again, you know, don't let this, this uh, sense of urgency wear off. And I'm speaking to all of you, not just Mateis. Don't let the sense of urgency wear off of this webinar. You know, oftentimes you see people go to self-help gurus or experts or seminars, and they're pumped up and they're excited, and they leave, and all of a sudden... They're back in the state of shit where they are like moving like molasses. Don't let that happen to you. I'm here. Cable's here. Frankie's here. Fernando's here. And if we don't have the resources and are not the resources, by God, I will move you to the person who is the resource. I'm well connected in this world and I will find the resource for you so long as you want it. What else do we have here? Awesome message. Thank you. Thank you, Shauna. Shock and all hampers, got my leads. All right, Gavin, hey, great job, man. You got your leads and you're good to go there. Uh, let's see, I think you're asking a question. How the hell do I read more of these questions? Aha, there it is. Shock and all uh, hampers, got my leads. What's the best way to upsell them? Well, the best way to upsell your leads is to have a pre um, prepared script. And so if you got the leads already, odds are they're already working out in your facility then what you want to do is set up a time to sit with them and go over a nutrition consultation. And that nutrition consultation will essentially be the closed client's system. If you don't have the closed client system, uh, just reach out to Frankie and he will uh, send you the link for that. Um, if you do have the closed client system, then rehearse that because that's the thing that's going to help you convert these leads into paying clients, my friend. All right, let's see, Stephanie, thanks, B. I do uh, group therapy stuff on a consistent basis. No shame. No shame at all, girl. Atta girl, we got to better ourselves. Uh, awesome, you're a legend. <laughs> awesome. Who is it? Ah, oh, Dean, you're so awesome, man. It was great hanging out with you this weekend. Uh, I'm struggling between two lists, my online and offline. Should I put them on one list or um, uh, and speak to both? You know what? If you've got an online and offline list, Dean, keep them separate. The more segregated you keep your list, the more... Um, uh, the more specific they are, one's online, one's offline, the better you can market to them. I know it sounds like a pain in the butt, but when you think about the five emails or four emails a day that Craig has to write to Turbulence Training, 
uh, to this turbulence training list, to early to rise list, to uh, uh, internet independence list, and then there's another uh, newsletter that he writes each day. Um, I mean, if he could do it for four, plus the two newsletters that he writes for, you know, you and I can certainly do it for two. So go ahead and keep it that way on that. Gavin, you're very welcome, my friend. 65 leads in three days, Gavin. Holy shit, man, you're on fire. The shock and awe baskets work indeed. All right, all right, uh, Jason Dean. All right, to two lists and get started. Yeah, just get started, man. Just write to both. That's it. Take action now. All right. Uh, thanks for being awesome. You're very welcome, Sylvia. Thank you for being awesome. Uh, this is Keith. I'm wondering if there's any way to siphon off email addresses from my fan page. Yes, there is, Keith. There's an awesome way to siphon off email addresses from your fan page, and I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. Um, unfortunately, it's not one of those cut and paste things, and quite frankly, those don't work best. What you're going to do is uh, one of two things. One, you could either go to optimizepress.com and like for like a 50 or 100 bucks, uh, it's a one-time purchase, buy Optimize Press, and it'll help you make your own squeeze pages. Remember, a squeeze page is a page that simply asks for a email address and name in exchange for a free report. Now, if you don't want to do that stuff, you don't know how to do that stuff, and from what I understand, it's easy to do. I don't do it myself because we have people in the HQ here that I outsource to. Uh, your other option is to reach out to Kelly, uh, and her email address is um, webmaster at pine conecomputing.com. Again, we'll put the resource there below this webinar. Um, Kelly at pineconecomputing.com. She makes all the sales site and squeeze pages for the people in my coaching programs. And Shauna was kind enough to refer her to us years ago. And uh, she'll make you a killer squeeze page. What you want is several different squeeze pages here, Keith. And this goes to all of you who have a um, fan page that has people on it. So you're going to make several different squeeze pages. One squeeze page will be a recipe uh, a recipe book, right, for the best desserts. The other one will be seven fat loss strategies. The other one will be the top 10 exercises to burn more fat. The reason is you've got all types of people on your fan page. And so what you're going to do is you're going to periodically put a, uh, a link to that to that squeeze page and say, hey, guys, I just put together a really awesome recipe book on the fastest, uh, on the best recipes for fat loss that you can make in under 10 minutes. And so you might have 10 or 15 people go and download that and, of course, end up on your email list. Then you're going to put the other, the top 10 exercises to burn fat. And you might have 20 or 30 people um, who take that. And, and essentially, so you're sucking out people from your fan page. But in case you're wondering why I build my fan page, it's up to 15,000 now. Why I buy the traffic, that's exactly why. Um, and, and remember, the other thing you can do if you, if you find this profitable, you have to test it. Uh, like what I'll do, if you look at my fan page, facebook.com forward slash fitness marketing, is I will actually say, write up, put a link up there that says uh, the art of selling fitness.com. Hey guys, this is the number one product for growing your personal training business and getting more clients, used by 6,500 trainers worldwide for the last 10 years. Um, you can pick it up here. And then, of course, I'll use the promote feature on that Facebook fan page thing, and uh, I'll, I'll spend like 30, 40, 50 bucks to promote that. And all that does is put shows my my Facebook comment there to more of my fans on a consistent basis and kind of puts that link in front of them to click. Um, you might want to test that. Probably works well with information products. Not sure how well it'll work with boot camps and personal training. Um, it's worth testing. And of course, Cable will uh, gladly work with you on that. And Fernando will and I will. Um, but the best thing to do is squeeze pages and then suck them right, different squeeze pages and suck them right onto your list. And you can literally put up a new squeeze page every week and your fans will actually be appreciative of this um, and they won't even realize what you're doing other than adding value to their lives. All right, Jeff says, uh, when presenting the closed client system, what do you say when your prospect already knows a lot of what you're talking about uh, despite their physique? <laughs> <laughs> right? Isn't that funny? So many people are know-it-alls, man. They know the information, but what are they lacking? They're lacking the action. And so what I would do, by the way, I've ran into that. You know, you can imagine I've sold over 10,000 people in my life um, using the closed client system. And I've plenty of times I've run into people who said, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know I should eat six times a day. And I literally called them on it. I said, well, you know, Mrs. Jones, based on your body fat percentage here that we took and your scale weight, and your desired goal weight, you know, while you know it, that's one thing. Knowing the information is one thing, but we're not trying to be collectors of knowledge here. We're trying to be 
people who apply knowledge and information. And so my job here is to help you apply knowledge and information. And so I'm just curious, what's stopping you from putting all this into action over the last couple of years? And typically, you're going to, what you're doing is you're going to call them on their bullshit of, hey, I, being a know-it-all but not taking action, giving you the opportunity to then say, you know what, I'm that missing component. I will help you get into shape. You know, I'll give you all the credit in the world. I know you know your stuff, and that's awesome, but I am the missing component, or my program is the missing component. So sometimes you have to lean on them just a little bit, but not to the point where they break. All right. Uh, let's see. Jason Dean. JT is going down. <laughs> all right. Uh, Matt Hayes. Uh, when starting the accelerator, uh, when starting the accelerator with the road of six figures in March, I want to reach six figures by November 30th. My man, that's a very good goal, and you're making it public. Uh, I'm about halfway there. Hey, good for you. And felt like this recent fitness ambassador didn't produce like I had hoped. So when talking to Cable, we, uh, who gave me another transformation program to run, and this webinar, I feel like I'm back on fire and over the discouragement. I'll let you know how it happens in December. My man, hey, that's great, man. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why this is so important that you had a stumbling block. Not everything works everywhere. I can tell you that with as irrefutable fact. That's why Cable and I over the years have accumulated literally 100 ways to get more clients. See, I don't know one way to get 100 new clients, but I do know 100 ways to get one new client. And while the Fitness Ambassador program may not work there, one could either look at that as a discouragement and say, you know what, this shit doesn't work, I'm done, and go into that cycle of negative self-talk, or say, you know what, coaches, that didn't work, I'm glad it worked for Dan and Shauna and Sylvia and this other person, but it didn't work for me, this is my market, what else can I try that's similar or different, and we'll give you that thing. But what happens more often than not, which is really unfortunate, is that one thing that failed is what we latch on and we discount all the success that we've had and we discount all the success that our coaches have been able to produce, produce for others. So I'm glad that you've got your goal, my friend. I'm glad that you had a, a hurdle in your life and that you've chosen to overcome that uh, by working with Cable and getting another promotion. So let me know how that goes. Just find me on Facebook and let me know. Uh, optimized press site is no longer up. Oh, no. If you get a new link, let us know. All right, I will let you know if there's a new link for Optimized Press, and I will pass it along to you guys. If not, um, I'll find some other resource for you guys and post it again in the membership site for the Fitness Business Accelerator program here. Um, I can't imagine that, that, that Michael would have taken down his site. Um, Michael Dunlop is a, is a really awesome young um, British man who, who created Optimized Press, and I can't imagine he'd take it down. So there's got to be a reason why it's down, or maybe he's moved it. Uh, moving on, ignore that last message. Okay, I'll ignore that last message. I just went on a rant for no reason. No, it's back up, Pedros. Thank you, Gavin. Optimized Press, ladies and gentlemen, is up, and you should go get it. <laughs> you guys are so awesome. All right. Oh, okay, it was Dan yesterday, but back up now. All right, happy to hear, guys. Looks like that's the end of our questions, and I hope that you got a lot of value from this specific webinar today. Um, again, my goal was just to really kind of get under your skin if I had to. Part of my job as a coach is to uh, sometimes deliver a nice firm kick in the ass, and I appreciate that from the people in my inner circle. There's nothing worse than having people always saying yes, being yes men, and uh, never really kind of getting you the kick in the ass that you need. So again, I, I hope I did that with love. I hope that if this resonated with you, that you take action on it. Uh, do not settle. Never, ever, ever give up because I promise you, if and when our paths cross, if I know that you've settled and given up, I will punch you in the gut. All right, guys. I hope that you got a lot out of this. It was uh, awesome shooting the shit with you guys and going over this web webinar. Uh, please reach out to your respective coaches. To me, stay connected to the network. This is Bedros Kulian. I'll talk to you guys next time on the next Fitness Business Accelerator Coaching Program. Take care, all. Bye-bye.